Hi children, welcome back to AP Macroeconomics with your favorite teacher, me, Mr. Fritz. Today, it's cold as H, and we're going to talk about fiscal policy. So, first of all, fiscal policy is referring to things that the government is doing, government actions that are affecting the economy. There's two tools of fiscal policy. The government's either going to tax or they're going to spend. That's the two things that the government is going to be doing in the economy, taxing or spending. There is both discretionary fiscal policy and non-discretionary fiscal policy. We've talked a bit about non-discretionary fiscal policy before. Those are your transfer payments, things like unemployment benefits and social security. Discretionary fiscal policy is going to be new legislation where Congress writes up new legislation in order to change taxes or spending. These two tools of fiscal policy, government taxing and government spending, are going to affect the government's budget. The government's budget is much like our own budgets. It's made up of income, the money that we bring in, so for us it'd be like our paycheck, minus spending, the money that we're actually spending. So for me, my budget each month is the check that I get take home at the end of the month minus all the money that I spend that month. For the government, instead of a paycheck, their income is coming from taxes, and government spending is like our spending. It's just any time the government buys goods and services. And so the government's budget is made up of taxes minus government spending. That's going to be your government budget. A government budget surplus is going to be when taxes are greater than spending, and a budget deficit is going to be when the government is spending more money than they're taxing. And in that case, they're going to have to actually borrow money in the form of treasury bills, or what we tend to call government bonds. First, let's look at what the government would do to fix a recessionary gap. Remember, in a recessionary gap, our big problem is we have a high unemployment rate. Our current real GDP is less than our potential real GDP, and the unemployment rate is greater than the natural rate of unemployment. So our problem, we need to get people back to work. The goal to fix that, the government wants people to spend more money. They want aggregate demand to increase and shift to the right. They'll do that two ways, either cut taxes and then the consumer spending. Remember, AD, aggregate demand is made up of CIG and X, C being consumer spending. If the government cuts personal income taxes, consumer spending will increase, aggregate demand will shift to the right. Or the government could increase government spending, because that's the G out of our aggregate demand. Either one of those, or a combination of the two, either lower taxes or increasing government spending is going to cause aggregate demand to shift to the right. And now we will have an increase in our price level, so our inflation rate is going to be increasing. But we're not too worried about that because what we wanted to fix is being fixed. Our real GDP is now increasing, we are at full employment output now, and our unemployment rate is decreasing. The government budget is going to be moving into a deficit now because taxes are low and spending is high, and so we're going to have a government budget deficit, and the government is going to have to borrow money in the form of treasury bills, again, what we call government bonds. What I just described is discretionary fiscal policy that the government did in order to close this output gap. Non-discretionary would be automatic stabilizers, things like unemployment benefits. When we go into a recession, transfer payments are going to increase because unemployment benefits are going to be increasing. They're called automatic stabilizers because now that the, that the unemployment rate increases, people are automatically going to start qualifying for unemployment benefits. They get that money, they start spending, aggregate demand can start fixing this gap. Next, we're going to take a look at an inflationary gap. During an inflationary gap, our main problem is high prices. Our inflation rate is getting too high. Our unemployment rate is low. That's not really the issue that we're worried about. We're worried about high inflation and prices getting too high. First off, non-discretionary fiscal policy is going to affect this. Remember, non-discretionary fiscal policy is things that have already been written in a law in the past. The one that I want you to remember the most is unemployment benefits. That's the main transfer payment I want you to think about. In an inflationary gap, our unemployment rate is really low. So unemployment benefits are going to go down. So our transfer payments are going to decrease. If the government wants to do something more than that, then they would need to do discretionary fiscal policy that would involve raising taxes and decreasing government spending, or one or the other. All right, so if we increase taxes and decrease government spending, aggregate demand will decrease and shift to the left. That ended up looking kind of weird, oh well. 
our price level will decrease. That's exactly what we wanted. Our real GDP will slow down. The economy was overheating. We needed to slow down so that prices didn't spiral out of control. Our price level has decreased, so we fixed what we were worried about. The unemployment rate did go up, but it went back to the natural rate of unemployment. As far as budget goes, taxes are high, spending is low, so we have a budget surplus. That's going to allow the government to maybe pay off their old debt if they wanted to do that. So that's fiscal policy. In the next video, I'm going to talk to you about tax multipliers and government spending multipliers. Goodbye, children.